Okay, so Pi News episode 40, and it's the first Pi News I've ever done on a Compute Module 4. I'm just trying it out. I've got a fresh copy of Raspberry Pi OS on it uh, because I'm going to run a speed test because I wanted to see how fast the eMMC drive is, but I'll do that at the end. Uh, and I also have a Samsung bar 128. The Samsung bars are really fast. I want to compare those and see how well this runs an operating system compared to the eMMC drive built into the Compute Module 4. Uh, but let's get on with Pi News. Okay, so first up, from Tom's Hardware, Extreme Overclocker takes Raspberry Pi to three gigahertz, which is quite the figure. So Claude Schwartz, he took a Compute Module 4, the light version, sitting in a Pi Train Mini Carrier Board from SourceKit, and removed the heat spreader that usually sits above the Broadcom SOC. He applied a liquid metal thermal paste based on gallium tin and indium, then replace the heat spreader to reach the magic three gigahertz. I won't go through all of it because uh, it's worth having a look at the story, but yeah, three gigahertz for a machine that is clocked at 1.5 gigahertz normally is really quite impressive. I've managed to go up to 2.3 uh, on my Pi 4 uh, with the Ice Tower cooler, uh, and I've also done some overclocking without any cooling at all, if you're interested in that. Next up from the register, a Raspberry Pi hat for the LEGO Technic fan. Uh, so you can see here, there's a hat that fits onto a Pi 4. Yeah, it must be a Pi 4 because of the HDMIs. And what's interesting about this story, they're using the Pico processor on this hat. Uh, and the price is really reasonable when you consider what you pay for the LEGO one. Compared to the cost of the LEGO involved, the complete Spike Prime set retails for a whopping $361.99 in the UK. The hat is a relative snip at $25. So yeah, great work. Uh, really interesting use of the Pi. Next up, thanks to JDPC Labelle for emailing me about this. Uh, this was before I'd seen any videos or anything on it. Uh, I got sent this and uh, it's done in the style of a TikTok video. So it's very, it runs very fast and uh, it's in vertical mode. But uh, when I did a search for it, I found a few people saying that they thought it was fake. But uh, the site was uh, obviously looks very genuine and you can go through it. Basically, it's a Pi 400 can sit inside a laptop style case. So you've got a laptop style display. Uh, you've got the trackpad that's been added, but not a lot else. Um, and uh, I planned to do this Pi News a few days ago, uh, but ETA Prime's already had one and already tested it. So if you want to see it uh, and want to see it in action, uh, ETA always does really, really good videos and uh, have a look at that. I don't think I'll be getting one. There's no battery, um, so it doesn't really work as a laptop, but I really do like the design of it. It's just that when you look at the price, uh, it's the sort of price you could get a sort of Pentium Gold uh, Windows laptop and put Linux on if you wanted to. So it's it's a tricky one, but I really like the innovation on it. I really like uh, it looks it looks pretty cool. And the Pi 400 is a great machine. And as we know, you can run so many different operating systems on a Pi. Uh, and also you have the GPIO pins, which you wouldn't get on a normal laptop. Although I don't know how accessible they are in this case. And next one, uh, the story that's happening everywhere really at the moment. Uh, so supply constraints hit some Raspberry Pi products, uh, but also we have had a price rise. So it wasn't that long ago that I was reporting in Pi News that the uh, two gig Pi was selling for the price of the old one gig Pi, which was discontinued. So the one gig Pi, which I covered in this video uh, two months ago, testing the discontinued Pi for one gig, I didn't like it. The, the one gig Pi, uh, certainly for running operating systems and gaming and things like that, I found it to be poor, but have a look at the video if you wanna know about it. I would definitely recommend the extra $10 uh, for the Pi 4 two gig. I still think it's good value for what you get out of it and how much you can do with the Pi, it is excellent. And it looks like they're scaling back the Pi 3 production and focusing more on the Pi 4. I'm sure they sell loads more Pi 4s. Next up on the official Raspberry Pi website, uh, Raspberry Pi Project wins North America's largest hackathon. And this was created within 24 hours and uh, it allows you to scan any object, turn it into a 3D image and upload it as a non-fungible token. So it's using a Raspberry Pi 4 with the Raspberry Pi camera takes 50 photos of the object from different angles, and then it converts it into the image. And there's more details in there, I'll put a link in the description. Next up from Tom's Hardware, Raspberry Pi Minitel project adds portability to retro computer. So this is a French computer from the 80s, and I always like to see inside these projects. Uh, it's a Raspberry Pi 3 inside there, and it's using a LCD screen, so a 10.4 inch LCD screen, and it's using some 3D printed components to properly mount inside the original Minitel shell. Also looks like it's got a battery as well. 
So this is an update to something I've covered in Pi News before. Retrolite CM4 is almost done. So this is, uh, well if this is next to a Nintendo Switch it looks almost exactly the same. And it's powered by a CM4, so that's how they can get it so small. And uh, USB-C charging, it even takes the Nintendo Switch charger which is quite cool. Uh, so let's have a look at the updated photos. So you can see it there running the software. And running the game got a little 3d printed stand there and this is what we want the inside pictures so you can see here when there's a nintendo switch next to it all the proportions and everything are very similar we can see the details of the speakers here the little lithium battery the cm4 with uh, looks like an aluminium heat sink on it yeah looking like a really impressive project and there's been more updates to the zega pi boy if you're looking for something very very small fits in a pocket uh, this looks really impressive, again using a Compute Module 4. The main board now contains everything needed including battery charger, digital audio and safe shutdown circuit. Thinking I should maybe add the extra USB port and HDMI out. All panels are made using PCBs. And if we flick through the photos, yeah it does. Just really nice to see, just really interesting the way it's taking shape. Very smart. This is nice with the Space Invaders logos on the back. And the Compute Module 4 connections will be here. And again on the Raspberry Pi site, I saw this story, code a Trans Am style top-down racer. Um, so you can basically play around with the code, and uh, I remember playing this on the ZX Spectrum back in the day. It was a really decent game. Uh, I remember it being nice and fast for back in the day. Um, but uh, you had the anxiety of trying to get petrol when you were running low on petrol. Um, but uh, you can see that the graphics have obviously had an upgrade. Uh, and all the code and everything is included in the story. So if you want to um, basically load it up, play the game, and then play around with it, then it's all in there. And there's a load of other games on the Raspberry Pi site with similar things where you can experiment with coding and learn how to create your own game. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to do a speed test on the EMMC drive that comes in the Compute Module 4. This is the 32 gig variant uh, with 4 gig of RAM. And I was going to do a comparison uh, run an OS on this 128 gig Samsung bar because it's actually faster than the 64 gig ones I use. This will be impressive to try. Okay, so let's start up the diagnostics and run tests. I usually do this three times. I do the same for SD cards. SSDs, hard drives, everything I've tried, I've always done exactly the same test on a fresh operating system. So show log, that was really fast. So what are we looking at? 76560, that's very good. Uh, random write speed is really nice at nine. So that the target is 500, we've got 9,127, and the random read is very good as well. I'll, I'll do some comparisons in a minute. Uh, right, so let's reset and run the test and show log. So 76, slightly slow on the sequential, slightly slow on the random write speed, and slightly faster on the random read speed, but very similar. Oh look, that's unusual, 76560. So the sequential write speed was exactly the same as the first one. The random write speed is the fastest on this one that I've got, and the random read speed is the fastest. So that's the best of the three tests. I'm gonna keep that one. So I need to save that, and I'll save that on this removable 64 gig drive. So now what I need to do is write Raspberry Pi OS to the 128 gig Samsung bar. So let's eject that and pop the Samsung bar in. Okay, so you can see it's shown up as Samsung USB. And I need to install Raspberry Pi Imager because it still doesn't come pre-installed on a Raspberry Pi, which I think it definitely should. It's a great program. So search for Imager and scroll all the way to the bottom. And here we go, Raspberry Pi Imager 1.6.2. Apply, let's close that down, and our images should be here. There it is. So I always use just the standard 32-bit Raspberry Pi OS for all my speed tests, two storage. So this is my 128 gig drive, and hit right, and yes. And you can see this is writing nice and fast because we have a fast EMMC and a fast USB stick, even though it's downloading at the moment. Okay, so let's transfer it all over to my four gig Pi, so. USB stick, HDMI, USB-C, and Ethernet. Okay, so that's all done and restarted. So we can see here free space 109.2 gig, total of 117.3. So accessories, diagnostics. So I think I'm gonna go with this one because it has the best random read speed as well as having a good write speed and sequential. So let's close down the others. I pop my USB stick in, uh, which has got that other speed test result on it. 
and let's copy it over. So looking at all the results together, uh, the EMMC drive is definitely better. Uh, so it's much faster on the sequential write speed. It's pretty much double the speed of the random, so 9287 for the random write speed versus 4701, and uh, even the random read speed, 7396 versus 2713. So that EMMC drive is definitely a lot better for running an operating system on. And also EMMC drives are supposed to be really, really good at holding data, so very reliable as well. Right, let's call up some of my videos and see what we had uh, comparing that Samsung bar to the best of the SD cards that I've tried. So let's do a search on my channel for speed. I'll just do search for speed. And yeah, 15 micro SD cards tested. So this is my most recent one. I think this has got the results of the bars in as well. So it's when we start to compare the best of the SD cards. So I would say probably my best SD card is the Kingston 64 gig Canvas Go Plus A2 card. Uh, but you can see here sequential write speed 32,000 compared to 50,000 on the Samsung bar. So the Samsung bar definitely beats it on that. Random write speed, it's nearly three times quicker. Uh, random read speed, weirdly, is actually slower on the Samsung bar. Overall, I would say the bar does take it, but it shows that that Canvas 64 gig is still a good micro SD card if you want an SD card. Uh, if I scroll down, I must have some USBs here. Oh, no, I haven't. I've kept it just to SD cards. So if I go back, I have got the USB. So when I first tested the Samsung bar in this one, yeah, here we go. So Samsung bar, 31,644 uh, versus 50. Yeah, so definitely, um, although looking at the random write speed, 4496, that's close. And the random read speed uh, was actually quicker on the 64 gig which is interesting. Now it could be because it's a smaller drive that uh, that made some of that difference because 128 is obviously a bigger drive. Um, but yeah, it does come out with faster speeds overall than the Samsung bar 64 gig. Um, but uh, yeah, it depends It depends how much storage you need because the 64 gig ones are really decent prices as well. Um, but they're still gonna be beaten by a pretty inexpensive SSD drive. So if we look at the uh, what have I got here? The Yukon drive, which was a 60 gig drive. Sequential write speed, 225, uh, compared to 76 on the EMMC drive. Uh, and the random write and random read. So we're still better to get an SSD drive uh, with a decent cable. So this is using the CSL cable. But I've actually moved over to the Ugreen cable now, which I find uh, is just as good. So speed-wise, SSD still takes it. But there's something about the convenience of these USB sticks. Um, it's nice to be able to just plug it in uh, and not have any extra cables or anything like that. But it's like anything, it's, it's whatever's gonna work better for your project. Yeah, I'm impressed with the 128 bar, but I'm very impressed with the EMC. I thought the EMMC was gonna be slower, um, but actually that's pretty decent speeds overall. And uh, when I was doing Pi News on the Compute Module 4, it definitely felt nice and snappy. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.